So with Unreal Engine's latest release, the 5.6 preview, we finally get to test out the full functionality of the MetaHuman character plugin. Basically, MetaHuman is now integrated directly into the Unreal Editor itself. I have spent quite a bit of time exploring the tool, getting a feel for just how advanced it has become compared to previous workflow. Of course, even though you can test it in the 5.6 preview, there are still a lot of bugs and missing features. So for this video, I had to use the U5 main branch straight from the Git repository. I also got to try out using custom MetaHuman faces with the MetaHuman Identity plugin and the results were way more accurate than before. So in this video, I am going to walk you through the features of the MetaHuman character plugin and really put it to the test by generating a few highly customizable characters, including a monstrous humanoid and a dwarf character inspired by the killer doll Chucky. So let's get started. To unlock the full functionality of MetaHuman Creator in your Unreal Engine 5.6 preview, start by ensuring that MetaHuman Creator code data is selected in the installation options of your Epic Games Launcher. Close any open Unreal Editor instances, enable this setting and complete the installation. Next, launch Unreal Engine and make sure that the MetaHuman Creator plugin is enabled. Restart the editor for the changes to take effect. And if you are planning to create custom MetaHumans like we will showcase later in the video, also enable the MetaHuman Animator plugin. Once the editor is restarted, right click in your content browser, go to the MetaHuman option and select MetaHuman character. This will create a new MetaHuman character asset. I get this default character initially, doesn't have a skin. So I will head over to the material section and select skin. This will assign a default skin. Just look at how realistic the skin shader is. So many options to explore here but before diving into customizations, let's test out the animation. You will notice a message saying it requires a rig to play. In the auto rig phase, I will select auto rig with blend shapes. Before the rigging can begin, I am being taken to this website where I am prompted to accept the MetaHuman face mesh content. Once I approve this and I click on confirm in this sign in option, the rigging process will start. After the auto rigging is completed, you can test out the face animations in the preview settings section over here. You won't be able to customize your character when it is rigged. So let's remove the face rig from here. Now it's important to note that since we are using the launcher preview version, a lot of features are still buggy or incomplete. For example, the head blend feature over here, which is supposed to let you blend between multiple head meshes, currently doesn't have the default head templates to choose from. This particular feature of customizing the shape of the teeth with this intuitive controls I found really useful. In the hair and clothing sections, you can add all your groom assets. But the hair section turned out to be quite buggy. Only one or two hair types could be correctly aligned while the rest simply refused to load. Okay, so now I am in the confirm mode of the head section. Confirm allows you to confirm your head shape either using some existing MetaHuman DNA file or via MetaHuman animator identity that we are going to make use of later in this video. Or if you have an existing MetaHuman skeleton, you can use that as a template as well. So I will use an existing head mesh to test the confirm. Here you can also add the individual eye meshes and the teeth mesh, but I will keep them empty for now. Yep, the face as well as the neck part is correctly taking the shape of the existing MetaHuman I had. So now let's look into all the customization options that we have in the body section. Don't mind the hair glitching over here because when you go back to any other section, then this gets fixed automatically. The customization options here are just incredible. You can see the wide range of variations I'm able to create. Each part of the body can be individually adjusted with details that are so finely crafted. It's genuinely impressive and highly useful. Now while you still can't create a completely defined monstrous body, the range of customization is still amazing, something that just wasn't possible before. This is just so cool that I decided to try an even better and more stable version without all the bugs we discussed earlier. So I went straight to the Unreal Engine GitHub repository and downloaded the UE5 main branch. This version has the most updated and stable MetaHuman character plugin. I compiled it directly on my system to run the editor from source. This shows Unreal 5.7. I'm not sure why, but I believe some of the features that we are going to test now 
may not make it to the final version of 5.6 although even that is going to be quite strange because they already have created all the tools you can find inside the metahuman creator asset most of them are just not working it is not we are testing any new features we are just testing a more stable and bug free version of this plugin all right now we are in the ue5 main branch so let's create our metahuman character asset we will start in the body section in blend mode you can now see all the default body types available for blending. I will simply drag three body types into the slot and begin customizing the shape of the body of our character. Next we will head over to the material section to assign the skin. Here you can set the skin color and most importantly you have separate texture indices for the body and the face. The face now offers a wide range of texture options. and it is more convenient to filter them using the texture index filters. For example, if you are creating a young person, you will typically want the face wrinkles to be low. And if you are creating a female character, you will want the stubble to be none. You can also create a really old person with lot of wrinkles. This section allows me to customize the accent color for different facial parts. This texture override section is really useful. It allows you to add custom texture maps for different channels. And from here you can adjust the freckles. Let's check out the eyes section now. These parameters were already there in the material instances before, but it was rather inconvenient for us to go in the materials and customize them from there. But this is quite convenient and rather easy to use. You have a lot of parameters to choose from over here. And here we have the makeup section to apply foundation to your character. We continue adjusting the body parameters. So here we are creating a feminine body type to make this character a female character. Alright, so now we are in the hair and clothing section. We had seen that this was quite buggy in the 5.6 preview version. But here it is very stable and working quite perfectly. Here in the details panel you can set the material properties for your hair and clothes. In the head tool, we have the blend section that lets you blend the different head meshes. In the transform section, you can transform individual facial features using these adjustable facial markers. It is similar to the move tool you had in your metahuman web sessions. But now you can also rotate and scale these facial parts wherever appropriate. This is super useful because it allows you to fine tune your head mesh with incredible precision before we can head over to the sculpt section. Now the sculpt section has significantly more markers giving you granular control over the character's facial features. For instance when adjusting these ears you can now move beyond the limits of an average human face. This is great for creating unique stylized or even twisted and deformed shapes. Now we are going to work with metahuman identity to create custom metahuman faces. I am going to use iClone character creator for this because iClone also has a lot of different customization options and even a lot of monstrous faces you can build that is still not possible in metahuman. So let's see how we can work with that. This will help us test how capable the latest version of metahuman identity is. So let's start by exporting this head mesh. 
and here we are in the metahuman identity editor we have imported the head mesh from character creator and we are going to solve it to create a metahuman identity asset so if you are not familiar with this i have covered it in detail in a separate video and you can find the link in the description so make sure to check that out now back in the metahuman creator in the confirm section of the head tool i will confirm the mesh using the identity asset the confirmation works really well Sometimes the eyes can get messed up, so you can choose not to confirm them by unchecking this checkbox. Geometry wise, the confirmation works really well. This face transformation is far more accurate than what we had so far. But these two faces still look different because of the difference in textures, and textures make a lot of difference in final result. So now we are going to test the metahuman identity system on this monstrous face I generated in Character Creator. This will really push the limits of the identity solver and help us understand how far we can go when it comes to generating custom head meshes. Okay, so I confirmed it and this is the result. The facial structure is really very close to the original mesh. The eye socket is coming outside, so I disabled the use eye meshes option. Metahuman is getting incredibly close to supporting full custom humanoid creatures. Honestly, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about how fast I can now create not only unique characters but also unique custom humanoid creatures for my game. And since this now comes directly into Unreal, it might even be possible to dive into the code structure and look at how we can replicate this at runtime, especially for games that need highly detailed and morphable character customization during gameplay. Once I finished with customizations, I created the full rig. This allowed me to test out both the body and the facial animations. So if I find any deformations over here, I can simply remove the rig and continue customizations. Okay, so let's look into another very interesting example. So here is a couple of stylized head meshes I generated using Meshi AI inspired by the killer doll Jaki. I'm using them to test how flexible the metahuman character plugin when it comes to creating a very stylized body shape. I tried to reduce the parameters of the body shape as much as possible to fit into a miniaturized version of a metahuman but there is a lower height limit of 135cm while I needed something around 76cm. So that's the main limitation I found, still I tweaked the parameters and modified them to loosely match the doll like body type. And then when it comes to confirming the head meshes to match the head shape, the first one looked pretty average but the second one really captured the menacing doll face I was aiming for. So this is the model I finalized and I started customizing this further. Once done, I created its rig. And the next step is going to be downloading the texture source and once this is done you can go to the assembly choose your character's name the directories everything where this is going to be saved and click on assemble to further customize its body shape after you have created the character you need to first go into the skeleton editor and try adjusting the bones this is just going to be a preview and won't permanently change your character structure but once you have an understanding of what bones to adjust and by how much you can use this transform bone node in the anim blueprint and specify the bones you want to transform and also set the values accordingly something like this can also be done via control rig but i will save the extensive control rig tutorial for another video Alright, so this is the final result with the transformed bone structure. The shape is now much more accurate for creating a character around 2-3 feet tall and the facial structure is spot on. Honestly, this looks so cool that I am already planning to make a dark humorous game with a killer doll concept. More on that soon. In the meantime, keep experimenting with the latest metahuman character plugin and if you run into any issues, whether it's compiling Unreal 5.7's main branch source or something else related to this plugin, drop a comment below. Finally, if you have enjoyed this, make sure to like, share and subscribe to my channel. And you can also follow me across different platforms to stay updated on my latest projects and experiments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.